Assalamu alaikum and welcome to your favourite is of course the Today Show. Now tonight we have the pleasure of hosting two esteemed guests, Sultana Pasha and Nasir Khan MBE. Now Sultana is a rising star in the transport industry, recognised for her exceptional work in community engagement, safeguarding and security within the rail industry. She is a member of the leadership team at Muslims in Rail, where she takes responsibility for sisters engagements and social media. Nasir, on the other hand, is the co-founder of Muslims in Rail and an expert in claims advisory and dispute resolution. He's been awarded an MBE for his services to equality, diversity and inclusion. Joining us this evening to share the experiences and insight on their work and the Muslim community's involvement in the rail industry, a very warm welcome to you both. <laughs> Assalamu guys, welcome. Um, Welcome to you. Hopefully you didn't have to travel too far. No, no, no that's okay. You took the train? Uh, absolutely. Yes, you have absolutely. To. <laughs> have it no other way. Have it no other. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, now, the burning question, I'll start with yourself, Brother Nasser, is what is uh, Muslims in Rail? Uh, Muslims in Rail is a community of rail professionals who are Muslims right. working in the rail industry. Ah, so it's just Muslims <laughs> in the rail. So it's not, it's not train enthusiasts then? Um, there could be, yes. but generally it's not for train enthusiasts. Yeah. It's very much to help our community ah. structure within the rail industry, yes. create environment for people who are like you and me, yes. or Sister Sultana, who can connect, who can grow, inspire each other. Absolutely. And Sister Sultana, welcome, of course, as well. So how does it work, Muslims? In, of course, you're, you're advocating and encouraging a lot of the sisters who are in the rail industry to participate. Uh, tell us a bit more about how it actually works. Sure. So Muslims in Rail bring together uh, members of the railway industry who affiliate themselves with the um, Islamic faith. Um, and we do so through social networking um, and network collaborations whilst inspiring the next generation through our STEM education programme. Oh, excellent, Marshall. So, and how many members are there out of interest? So I think, I believe we've got over um, 1,000 followers um, right. and members spanning over 30 organisations. Wow, Marshall, because I imagine there must be a lot of Muslims working uh, in the rail sector, right? There is quite a lot of Muslims and it's still not enough in terms of the diversity aspect. Yeah. But Mashallah, every year our reach is growing. The number of organisations who are signing mm. up is improving. And we are able to do more and more because mm. the more members we have, the more volunteering we can do within the mm. industry. No, absolutely. So what was the need for this? I, I suppose the question, because it must be a background behind this, right? Why it was all created. I know you're, you're one of the founding members, right? So what was the reason for setting it all up? So as Muslims, we like community. And one of the key aspects of founding Muslims in Rail was trying to develop communal spaces for worship. Mm. And rail industry is huge. You have over 300,000 people working in the rail industry. Wow. And within wow. the dynamics, you can think about even if 5% of these are Muslim, which we understand is the statistics, yeah. you have a lot of people who need these communal places. So the start grew with that. But then later on, we helped improve the policy dynamics mm. and EDI strategies, equality, diversity, inclusion right. strategies of various yes. organisations. Right. And so, Sultana, how diverse is the rail industry? Of course, I know you know, you're, you're encouraging a lot of uh, uh, women, sisters to, to partake, but are you finding it's, it's, that there is a, a wide range of diversity within the rail industry? I think, alhamdulillah, we've come a long way um, and there is still a great work of a um, great deal of work to do. Um, so according to the House of Commons um, All Party Women's and Inequality Committee, they've actually highlighted the shortfall um, of um, the sort of the penalties, if you like, of right. the um, of Muslim women in the joining the industry. So Muslim women are, are often sort of um, pushed back because mm. they're Muslim. They come from a black and um, Asian minority yes. ethnic background, and of course, because they're women. Mm, no, true, triple whammy. True. Triple whammy, yes, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. We've got all the, all the, all the main things there, which, which, which obviously normally push down to the bottom of, yeah. of the pirate. So, because I know you're, you're leading on the diversity and inclusion side of, I guess, is that of, of the rail sector? Uh, quite, quite a yeah. lot across the rail sector, right. infrastructure, transport in general, and I work with various institutions as well to help grow. We co-authored the Railway Industry Association EDI Charter right? and with a specific focus on our faith and right. the needs and the requirements that Muslims may have. It mm. could be through giving awareness in Ramadan, yes. how fasting works for employers ah. and employees. I mean, that's one of the key yes. aspects of our delivery. And we've created a Ramadan guide. Yeah. It's been going around across the industry for over six years now and we update it regularly and it's been followed 
uh, quite quite a lot across the industry. Oh, amazing! So, so it's almost like there's diversity training, but also religion inclusivity at the same time. Absolutely, it's it's important to understand the key aspects, and this is where some employers found it really interesting mm. when they found how fasting works, when they found how we have to pray five times a day. Yeah. I mean, one of the key aspects, as I mentioned, was trying to create multi-faith spaces right. in the workplace. Right. And um, we had a lot of support. Network Rail is one of the biggest employers within yes. the rail industry. And it was great to see that through our specific guidance and general guidance that we created, we were able to create over 75 places of worship at different offices. Wow, 75 different places of worship. Yes. So this is across the, 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 the network? Across right the now. network, across the UK. And wow. then that advice was then followed by a lot of train operating companies, TFL. Right. And then standardization works yeah. brilliantly. Excellent. This is brilliant. This is so good, the, the changes that you're making. And I obviously understand there was an iftar which was organised last year. So tell me what happened at the iftar, Sultana. Sure. So um, we, uh, Muslims in Rail, we have a yearly sort of campaign called Discover Islam. And we right. work with major um, masjids across the country um, to invite non-Muslim um, members of the community to join us to sort of observe fast with us for the day as part of our national um, fast day campaign. Um, we, and also they they also witnessed the, the prayer. Um, so every year, alhamdulillah, for the last about six, seven years, we've held iftar at London. Since cool. last year, we've expanded to Glasgow, Birmingham and Manchester, alhamdulillah. Um, so during Ramadan this year, on the 5th of April, we sort of kick off our London um, iftar. Yeah. But we, we will see attendance from um, esteemed guests, including the CEO of Network Rail, which is pretty right. major for yes. us. Yeah. Um, and also other members across the rail industry. So That's it's really special for us. Not yeah. much I can imagine. And have you found, because I remember last year, I saw this all over social media where uh, kind of colleagues, non-Muslim colleagues, were joining in the fasting as well. Have you found that that you know colleagues in National Rail or Network Rail rather uh, have been doing the same during the iftars? Uh, absolutely, and and the appeal from us goes across the industry. There are two facets for it. Number one, you experience by experiencing. Yes. So. Explaining it to our non-Muslim colleagues, oh, uh, you know, this is how fasting yeah, happens. Yeah. Until you do it, you don't understand. Yes. And what we have found is, and we always interview the people who have fasted to understand the dynamics. Yes. You know, the spirituality increase. That's the most common answer everybody has given us. Mm. That they have understood the meaning of patience, the meaning of yes. having organized their day yeah. to, 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 to accommodate the fast. Yeah. And the second aspect is to develop our charity campaign, ah. which is very important because yes. every year we run a fast money campaign. Right. And what we ask is we ask Muslim and non-Muslim colleagues that either donate it to our chosen charity, which this year is Muslim Aid for the uh, right. North Syria and Turkey earthquake campaign yes. or any other charity. Right. If you donate your breakfast, lunch money, yeah. that's five or ten pounds. Ah, and it will amazing. be amazing, whichever charity everybody yeah. wants to support. So this year, we are doing our annual fast day on the 5th of April. Right, so this is amazing. So everyone will then have a day of collective fundraising. Yeah. I think it's called Fast Money, as, as, yes. as you said, for Muslim Aid, of course, one of our partners there. That's brilliant. And I imagine not just the Muslims, but everybody's partaking in this, right? It's brilliant because, you know, if people just say, OK, I'm not going to have my coffee. Yeah. And that money goes into the charity box. Yes. And, and that's what we are asking. We don't, you know, we don't push people yeah. into it. It's about yeah. attracting. And through the campaigns and through more guidance and awareness, yeah. I think people have better understanding. And one of the biggest dilemma is we always say, you know, people are ignorant or not. What yes. have we done yeah. to educate them? No, true. And true. that is one of the key aspects that Muslims yeah. in Rail are trying to do to educate people who are working in the industry yeah. so that we can help grow them mm. and then inspire and attract the next generation. No, alhamdulillah. It's obviously much amazing work that you're doing, changing hearts and minds of colleagues, I suppose, ac across the network. But I suppose one thing I really want to touch on, Sultan, and maybe I'll direct this to yourself, is you know, hate crimes on the railway itself. Is, is that something we're still seeing? Is that still a problem? What's been your experience of that? Sure. Um, so, unfortunately, hate crime does exist. Mm. Um, it doesn't happen very often. Um, and so we don't want to, absolutely don't want to scaremonger. Um, but I suppose there is track anxiety related to hijab observing women yes. and this sort of relates back to an incident in 2015 where um, uh, hijab wearing women she was um, pushed onto the tracks by a, right. a male um, fortunately she sort of bounced off the cab and then she landed back onto the platform yeah. but there's a great deal of work happening in the background and yeah. um, so I think 
nasty touched on a point around um, sharing experiencing is yes. you know around the experiences I think it's very easy to tell people about Islam but we must show them through our actions etc um, as part of my safeguarding role um, I actually work with the British Transport Police which is a specialist um, sort of police network dedicated to the transport industry right um, specifically to the rail um, so we deliver a number of um, customer awareness sessions right. um, with police presence and visibility just providing better reassurance and encouraging mm. bystander action. So not just a bystander action for Muslim community, but also yes. the wider community to sort of um, encourage um, empathy, understanding and respect for um, all communities. No, absolutely much. And, and is there anything specifically that Muslim in rail have done? Because obviously that, that sounds like that's a wider piece. Uh, is there anything specific that Muslims in rail uh, is able to do on this? You know, oh, yes. yes. Um, we have held a lot of government infrastructure um, awareness campaigns. So we've done a report for the National Infrastructure right. Campaign. We've also done report for the HS2, for Department of Transport. We've just recently submitted a report for Network Rail on the Great British Railway Transition. Right. And it's very much focused on Muslims from two perspectives. Number one, the employees who mm. work in the railway, how all of these changes affect. And second is from the customer perspective, yes. that the customer needs should be imperative. And especially mm. rail being one of the largest industries in the country has a lot of impact on social value. Yes. And, and that's why we ask a specific focus for there is a lot of deprivation up and down the country. Yeah. We always talk about North-South divide. Yes. And that's why Midlands and North Railway or Southeast how social mm. value can be generated through the railway. Amazing. So it sounds like um, there's a lot of advisory work happening here as well then. A absolutely. There is a lot. I mean, we sit on several different boards, infrastructure right. campaigns, and a lot of these organisations ask for our opinion on a lot of matters. Yes. No, absolutely. And they, much, they, they need this advice. Yes. I think you guys are, are, are well placed for this. Now, now of course, I'm a passenger. <laughs> I, you know, I, I use the, I say I use the tube more often than I use National Rail. I haven't had the need to travel outside London uh, uh, much. But so what, what, what kind of expectations can I have looking forward to the next five, ten? I know we we're talking about HS2. Um, are, are there good things for passengers to expect in the coming future? Oh, 100%, absolutely. I mean, you see the um, endless benefits from the Elizabeth Line, which I very much... Yes, uh, I love you the know, Elizabeth Line, it's so good. I, yes. you know, I, so I work for the Elizabeth Line, right. so it's fantastic. And, you know, we've seen um, open carriages, like reduced um, journey times, and um, better passenger experience. And I think one of the things um, in the equality and diversity space, um, there is an absolute a need for um, a more diverse talent pool. Um, and we try and do that through our STEM outreach. So reaching out to the young, younger generation around, you know, mm. I think quite typically, certainly in the Asian community, success is you're an engineer, you're a doctor, but actually success comes through different um, avenues. Yeah. And you see, alhamdulillah, you see Nasid, like who has really climbed the ladder um, and just trying to inspire the next generation, really. But going back to your question around what can you expect from the rail industry and yeah. you know how it shapes passenger um, experiences, better journeys. Um, improve trains, yes. um, reduce delays. Um, there's constant innovation in the rail industry. Um, so, you know, Alhamdulillah, we're, no. as part of uh, Muslims in rail, we're part of that. No, Alhamdulillah. So I think, so I think it, yeah, it to goes into well. safer, better, faster. Sa I like that. I think, I think that's what we want better, to expect. Faster. Brother Nasir, Brother Sister Sultan, it's been a pleasure having you both on the show and looking forward to having you back. We're going to have you here for the big Ramadan show. I Inshallah. Believe. Inshallah. Inshallah. We'll be back. So looking, and, and hopefully get an update on your Ramadan. I know you're doing it in the early days of Ramadan, so we'll get an update on your Ramadan activities yes. for sure. Inshallah. Inshallah. Looking forward Brilliant. to it. <laughs> looking forward you. to it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, well, look, folks, we're now off uh, for a short break. By the way, if you're part of the Rail Network, join Muslims in Rail. It's a great thing to be part of. Join them. It's fantastic. But it's time for a short break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back.